Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at the Kaiser Vanguard Series Domen. Uh, this knife has been around for a few years. Uh, I've never got around to reviewing it, but uh, now it's time to take a good look at this knife. So before I do that though, I want to let you know that uh, today it's Sunday morning. It's the 29th of March. Everyone in my family, all my loved ones, my friends, everybody I know, is doing fine. Nobody has uh, contracted the uh, COVID-19 virus, which is a good thing. So we're all doing pretty good. And uh, me with my existing conditions that I have, I'm still slowly improving. So hey, tiny, tiny steps, but they're moving in the right direction. So now let's set this tabletop up and we're gonna take a good close look at the Domin. Regular size, not the mini. Keep watching. Well, I normally start off by doing a size comparison. Uh, we cleaned the house uh, about a week ago and I haven't recorded any new footage until today and now I can't find my Ontario Rat 1 knife. It'll show up. <laughs> but I've got this. This is the new, uh, from Ganzo, the FB727S. Uh, not the 727M that's been out for several years. This is supposed to be like the Ontario Rat 2. It actually is a slight bit bigger than the Ontario Rat 2. Uh, about, uh, you know, five-eighths of an inch longer, actually. And most of that's in the handle. So that gives you a size comparison. It's between a Rat 1 and a Rat 2. <laughs> Hope that helped. Um... Uh, I'll give you all the dimensions and specs for this knife later on in the video. So what do we have? We've got a VG10 steel blade, stone wash treatment, uh, square spine. Well, the edges have been rounded over slightly so that it's fairly soft. All stone washed, full flat grind, um, you know, a bit of a drop point here. and a sharpener's toil that's just big enough. And uh, that's not really a forward toil, but it is a little bit of a spot that you could rest your finger there if you needed to, um, unless you've got really, you know, sausage fingers, then that wouldn't really work for you. But uh, this might not be a, a knife. If you've got extra large hands and sausage fingers, this probably is a knife that's a little too small for you. My hands are between large and extra large. Uh, and it fits very well, but if my hands were, you know, well into the extra large, then, you know, it might be starting to feel a little bit small for me. We've got uh, steel liners, G10 handle scales, a, a G10 lanyard option at the back here, which is a short back spacer, very short, and then the lanyard option to, uh, with the hole right there. And that's all. There's some skeletonizing in here. I'll take it apart for you a little bit later. We've got uh, washers in here. Uh, this knife, I think, came out in 2017 or 2018. I don't remember exactly. And that was just as the uh, ball bearing craze was really starting to ramp up. And washers are just fine. You know, it opens great. It close, closes well. It's nice and smooth. You know, it's not free and loose to fall all over the place, but it's very nice. No blade play side to side. Well, actually, a super tiny bit of blade play side to side. I could just barely feel it when it was brand new. And I noticed if I tighten it up so that there's absolutely no blade play, then it's a little bit tighter than I want it to be. So it's really, really hard to feel that blade play uh, from side to side. Certainly none involving the lock. There's nothing up and down at all. So that's just to, I got to give you all the information, right? Like I said, VG10 steel and um, two screws in the back to hold it together, which is nice and sturdy. Pocket clip is right or left. It's a straight pocket clip, but it's got a slanted uh, end on the handle there. So it'll look a little bit odd on this side, but it'll still be perfectly functional. It will also be uh, have a little bit more of the handle exposed out of your pocket on the left side because the low screw is here 
instead of that being the low screw, you know, because on this side it's low and up, here it's down. We've got thumb studs, didn't mention that before. The thumb studs are not the stop pin. It's got one of those captured stop pins on the inside. It just looks like it touches there. It's actually a tiny bit of a hair of a space right there. Pivot pin that's not free spinning, so that's very good. We've got T8 here and T6 for the rest of the knife. I like the shape of the pocket clip. It's functional, it holds well. Uh, even though it points up at the end, it's nice and rounded, very soft. Let's put it in a uh, pocket in some jeans. Putting it in, just holding the pocket and pushing, it climbs over the pants perfectly and you know it just works. Good textured G10. It's not super aggressive, but it offers a fair bit of grip. There's no other jimping anywhere, uh, not other, there's no jimping at all on that knife. We've got um, you know, a very comfortable handle. I call it sort of a candy bar shape where it's pretty much straight. There is a slight curve to it. It's really hard to see with the spine being higher. You know, the whole thing, you know, if it's this way, it'd be like the shape of a smile, but ever so slightly only. <laughs> so there you go. That's the main look of the knife. Uh, some more detailed things. We've got a little bit of a cutout here to access the liner lock release. And it's enough of a cutout, so that's a good thing. Lockup is a little bit later than I like it to be. It's almost at the halfway point, like the point of contact where the lockup is. Here's a close-up picture of that. And uh, then when the knife is closed, the alignment is, you know, very, very good. There is a little bit, you might say that arguably there's some jipping on the uh, G10 here of the uh, lanyard backspacer thing. So maybe there is. And that comes in a little bit handy, you know, in a reverse grip. That's actually very handy right there. Nice and comfortable. But even a reverse reverse can be comfortable. At least it is for me. And uh, all the other grips you want to do, you know, a pinch grip, fist grip, saber grip, you know, a side grip like this. That's also a saber grip. You know, it's it's a comfortable knife to hold and it's it works. It does the job that you want it to do. At this point of the video, I usually pull out my small measuring tape and I put it in the corner of the screen uh, when I'm going to be talking about the dimensions and everything. Uh, well, <laughs> I can't find it right now. I'm sure it's with my Ontario Rat 1 knife. So this one will have to do. As long as this is on the screen, I'm talking about all the specs. And when I remove that, I'm done with that section. Like I said, VG10 steel, that's a Rockwell 58, 59-ish, maybe usually closer to 59-ish, usually. It's got a sharpness from the factory of about 175 bests. That's good. Uh, the weight of the knife, 103 grams, 3.65 ounces. Not bad at all. I really like that. Uh, to, and uh, for sizes now, the cutting edge is 8.75 centimeters, 3.44 inches. The blade length, just a tiny bit less, 8.69 centimeters. And I'm not measuring to the stop, to the pocket clip. See, I did it again. I'm not measuring to the thumb stud. I'm measuring to the handle. Well, 3.42 inches, 8.69 centimeters. The uh, blade thickness, and I measured right here close to the thumb studs to get the full stock thickness that we have back here. And this one has a distal taper that starts immediately and works its way thinner all the way along. And that is 3.19 centimeters, 1.255 inches. So a tiny squeak of a hair over an eighth of an inch. So, and then it, but it gets thinner. It's got a fairly delicate tip. The uh, blade depth, and I measure an inch up from the sharpener's toil. So where my thumb nails are, uh, we've got 2.24 centimeters, 0.88 of an inch this way across. The thickness of the edge behind the grind right there at the same one inch spot, 0.42 millimeters, which is 16 and a half thousandths of an inch. So it's nice and thin behind the grind. Uh, I wouldn't want it any thinner. Uh, VG10, this is thin enough. Uh, the grind angles on here, a little bit too steep. 
23.1 degrees, so measuring to the middle, if it's sitting like this. Measuring to the middle, 23.1, and the other side it's 23.9. I would rather have the VG10 sharpened at around 20 degrees, uh, maybe even down to about uh, 18 degrees. But it's easy to do that. You should learn how to sharpen a knife, and if you just can't, Hopefully you've got somebody near you that can sharpen knives because you certainly don't want to throw a knife away when the factory edge is no good anymore. Because it will happen. <laughs> uh, the handle now. Handle length. And so that's the uh, liner is exposed right there. So I'm measuring from the exposed part of the liner all the way to the end right here. 11.7 centimeters, 4.6 inches. The grip area it's roughly 10 centimeters, very close to four inches. The handle thickness is 11.5 millimeters. So 1.15 centimeters, which is 0.452 inches. Handle depth, this dimension now measured here, the handle depth is 2.17 centimeters. That's 0.85 inches. When the knife is closed, this dimension here is uh, at its largest 2.87 centimeters, 1.13 inches. And the total length of this knife when the blade's deployed tip to the end, 20.4 centimeters, 8.03 inches. So we'll call it eight inches. And uh, the blade is almost three and a half and the total is eight. So that's not bad at all. So four and a half for the handle. And the, just before I go on, there's the balance point right there. I like that balance point. It's a very comfortable, light little knife. Remember, it's barely over three and a half ounces and yet full size. How much does this knife cost? Well, since it's a Kaiser, but it is of the Vanguard series, um, it is a little bit pricier. Uh, they want to sell these and most stores have them on for about $53. White Mountain Knives has them on for $53, but I've got a 10% off coupon code for you. CCE is the coupon code, and when that happens, it's now $47.70 US. Uh, the mini, the smaller version of this, uh, is not much less, but $50, and then after 10% off, $45. So there you go. Amazon has this for about $50 to $52.99, depending on which color you get. Oh, I will mention the colors in just a moment when I'm done the price. Um, in Canada, Blades Canada has the mini, but they're charging $99.99 Canadian for it. Uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, charging, even with the, today's exchange rate, that's still charging way too much. Um, if you're in England uh, or the UK, well, England's in there too, <laughs> but if you're in the UK or if you're on uh, continental Europe, uh, this is about 90 euros, about 80.35 pounds uh, at knifeandtools.com for you guys over there across the pond. So let's take a look at the colors on this. This knife also comes in black, blue, and tan. So to summarize, what do I like, don't like, what's unique about this thing? Um, it's got an internal stop pin. That's kind of nice. Uh, doesn't really make a difference on how well it functions, in my opinion. Um, I like that the screws back here, even though they're the rounded over ones, they are recessed. So that's nice, you know, except for these two up here. I, um, you know, another, well, a unique thing is there's no jimping anywhere except for on that G10. That's not very common these days on most, you know, pocket knives. But it feels comfortable and it does offer a secure grip. And um, maybe that's in part because on the, here on the, on the spine of the blade, you've got your steel liners. They're exposed a little bit proud. Same here on the belly. And then they're chamfered. That gives a little bit of traction in your hand, actually. And, you know, that's a good thing. It doesn't stop any sliding up and down this way, but any side to side motion, twisting, you know, you can get a good hold on this knife. Um, the texture on the G10 is better than most knives with G10 these days. Uh, slightly more aggressive. That's I, I like it slightly more aggressive than most manufacturers make it. 
So it's not super aggressive at all. Uh, like I said, it's very comfortable in just about any kind of grip. Uh, it does have a very fine tip. You need to be aware of that. Uh, slight prying with this is going to chip that tip right off or break it off. Uh, being a full flat grind that's very thin behind the edge makes this a very good slicing knife. Um, I like that the pocket clip is right and left. Um, this little bit of forward grip here, you know, if they wouldn't have made it the same way, you know, it might not be comfortable, but you know, that's another option. I like that. Um, the cons, well, I mentioned the fine tip. That can be a con. If you're a person who te is tempted to often pry things out, this knife wouldn't be a good choice. Um, and as I mentioned before, if I remove all the blade play by tightening this, like all of it, then, you know, I can still open and close the knife. I can still open it with my thumb, but I need to get some wrist action in it then as well. Uh, so I found the comfort zone for me for this knife is to have a very, very tiny bit of blade play side to side. And... Uh, very smooth action. Now let's see the insides of the knife and I'll tell you why it's got such a smooth action. And uh, here it is taken apart and well not quite apart I just took the handle scale off. There we go. That's off. A very thin phosphor bronze washer there and a second one and that's it. So there's two on each side I guess. One there and one there. Yep there's two on each side. A little bit of lube in there. Let's get this to the middle here. So this side, no skeletonizing. This side's got skeletonizing. You've got that uh, curve there. That's for the uh, lock bar. That's the, uh, not the lock bar, the stop pin, the uh, hidden or recessed. Hidden stop pin is probably the best explanation for it. And there you can take a good look at the lanyard hole. Maybe we can get a close up of this. There you go. So you can see how that works. Well, actually, when I went to clean this up, because I want to take pictures of the washers and things, I realized there's a very tiny white nylon washer that is in between the two phosphor bronze ones. This is very thin. Two, phos two phosphor bronze ones and one white one in uh, each of the sides, and that's why it's got such smooth action doesn't need ball bearings to have smooth action. I think that looks like that's a ceramic detent ball and not a steel one. So I'll just clean this up, take some still pictures, and then put it back together again. Keep watching. So there you go. Usually I don't leave the inside a part of the video right to the very end, but that's what we did today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to help out uh, my channel, uh, one thing that you can easily do that helps out is let the advertisements play, or at least some of the time. It's an easy way to help me. You can join Patreon. Uh, that helps out my channel quite a lot as well, and I give back to my Patreon supporters with a chance to win a knife every single month. And right now you've got like a 1 in 30 chance every month, so that's a good thing. Slightly over 30. Um... Or, you know, you can just help out by encouraging, being encouraging and everything in the comment sections, uh, leaving a comment. You know, all those things help when you, uh, when you do them on YouTube. I am thinking about doing another knife sale soon. Uh, we'll see, but it'll be after the end of the month. Well, it is the 29th today, so Sunday the 29th. So it'll definitely be at, it might be the end of April maybe a little bit sooner. We'll see. Um, I find it really hard to do knife sales. It it just drains me for some reason. <laughs> I find them difficult because I always want to do my best for everybody, but not everybody's always satisfied with the process. And, you know, and I like making everybody more than satisfied. So if you have purchased from me before, and especially if you purchased from me and had a good experience, let people know in the comments how easy it is to deal with me. <laughs> and whatever else you want to say about it. So thank you for watching this video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. I think I said that before. But remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.